From 500 BCE to 200 CE, within this lengthy 700-year interval, the Eastern continent saw the emergence of several key figures that would change history, such as Qin Shi Huang, who united the warring states and established an empire, or the ambitious Emperor Wu of Han, who opened up the Western regions. During the same period, the Western world at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa saw the successive rise of the Greek city-states the Alexandrian Empire, and the Roman Empire. The great masters of the age sculpted many classic marble works, such as the athletic and masculine Discobulus of Myron, and the statues of Venus, the embodiment of beauty. These perfectly proportioned treasures had a profound impact on later artists. Realistic sculptures depicting an ideal image can also be found in the underground terracotta army of Qin Shi Huang in the east, and the dynamic bronze galloping horses and jade divine beasts of the Han dynasty also represent artistic masterpieces of idealized beauty. With lovely proportions and a fullness of strength, these brilliant works are mutually complementary with Western sculptures, and together they rank among the greatest artistic treasures of humankind. However, Although marble, clay, and bronze were commonly used materials in both the East and West, jade was a singular material unique to Eastern art. Compared with marble sculpture, jade carving is significantly more difficult. Firstly, jade carvings are typically much smaller in size than marble sculptures. Secondly, the textures of both materials are completely different. Marble has a hardness of three on the most scale, with a relatively soft and loose texture, while jade has a hardness of six to 6.5 on the most scale. The extraordinary toughness of jade material, together with the miniature size and intricacy of the finished works, have made jade carvings extremely difficult to craft. The jade craftsmen of ancient times had to find abrasives of greater hardness devise ways to attach these abrasives to tools or the jade materials, and then use cutting or abrasion techniques to slowly craft the decorative patterns and overall designs on the jade artifacts. Therefore, during the Warring States period to the Han Dynasty, jades were esteemed articles reserved for the highest levels of nobility. And because jades were exclusive to only the greatest of nobles, craftsmen of the time would exert their utmost to create works of exceptionally fine taste. In addition to wonderfully realistic divine beasts, craftsmen used their amazing talents to apply techniques now known in modern psychology as ambiguous visual stimulation, thereby creating a unique form of dynamic illusory art. Jades of the Warring States period generally used the serpent archetype, while jades of the Han Dynasty primarily used the beast archetype. In the Warring States period, designers had to consider how to simplify the serpent form to meet various creative needs. As with the ancient proverb, one bitten by a serpent dreads a rope for a decade. We may mistake sinuous coils of rope for a serpent because its shape has surpassed the minimum sensory threshold required to identify a snake. In this way, even if designers simplify the serpent form into a twisting silhouette or thin line, this will be sufficient to convey the physical shape of the serpent. 
This design, similar to the sine wave in mathematics, is also an excellent way to create a dynamic sense of motion because its wave pattern will induce a visual sense of undulating rhythm. With the addition of eyes to the pattern, a dynamic figure with directional movement emerges. Therefore, when examining jades from the Warring States period, the undulating sine wave shape can be found across a variety of jade artifacts. And the excellent effect of this design caused it to be adopted by Han craftsmen, who often depicted various dragons and beasts in serpentine postures. Yet, considering that Han era jades are mostly based on the beast archetype, why do we not mistake the sinuous bodies of sacred beasts for serpents? This is because our brains automatically interpret beast designs as being three-dimensional. When assessing the simplified silhouettes of beast designs, discernment may be hindered by the uncertain outlines seen from some angles. However, if in such silhouettes, just one of the legs is clearly outlined, the entire shape of the beast becomes immediately discernible. Therefore, when Han-era designers sought to simplify their beast designs, the legs remained a key element that had to be depicted no matter what. For example, the majestic winged divine beast here, when viewed from certain angles, may have an indecipherable silhouette. But as long as the legs are clearly delineated, even with two flying wings upon its back, the shape of the beast cannot be obscured. Moreover, beast legs stimulate the brain more strongly than the serpent form so that when a beast leg is identified, the serpent form is ignored. Here, we use these two jade dragons, similar in appearance, but from different eras, to explain the wonderful workings of human vision. This jade dragon from the Middle Warring States period has a sinuous serpent form with beautiful curving lines that convey a dynamic sense of movement. Although this jade dragon from the early Western Han Dynasty also has a sinuous figure, once its legs are discerned, the serpent form immediately morphs into a beast, and the jade dragon must be rotated into an upright posture for the brain to perceive it as reasonable and harmonious. Now, isn't this interesting? Besides the use of sinuous body shapes to create dynamic effects, master jade craftsmen had yet another extraordinary invention in that they followed the principles of what is now known as visual continuity to generate dynamic illusions. So what is the principle of visual continuity? Here, we use the familiar undulating sine wave to explain this concept. If several appendages are added to the sine wave, we can still discern the main body of the wave itself with no interference whatsoever. This is the simplest explanation of this principle. Artifacts of the serpent archetype from the Warring States period were designed with this visual characteristic in mind. So apodal, monopodal, bipodal, or even multipedal designs do not affect us in any way. If a jade dragon should gain limbs on each side of its body, not only will the brain not be distracted, but it will automatically pair the dragon head with various legs to create directional movement. If there are two pairs of legs, each facing in different directions, ambiguous stimulation occurs. Such ancient techniques of using ambiguous stimuli to create dynamic illusion are still in use and can be seen in the folk prints of the East. But for the jade designers of the Han Dynasty, applying ambiguous stimuli was much more challenging, as designs had now shifted from the serpent archetype to the beast archetype and the position of the beast legs had to conform with physiological principles. The front legs had to be connected to the chest and hind legs with the abdomen for us to see these designs as being natural and harmonious. Under such conditions, if beast legs were to be involved in creating ambiguous stimulation, the only solution was to distort the beast form so that the chest and abdomen may be positioned differently, thereby allowing their respective leg pairs to also face in different directions. Although these designs can induce dynamic illusion, 
we may still feel that such distorted creatures are weird and unnatural. Though they may be aesthetically pleasing, surely they could not exist in the real world. However, is the world that you and I perceive real? Is it true that forms which defy conventional perception can never exist? Let us temporarily set aside what we have learned from textbooks and look at this world purely as we perceive it. As with our ancient forebears, we will likely believe that the world is flat, that the sun revolves around the earth each day, and that the parallel lines at our feet will never meet. But scientific research over the past 2,000 years has made the world that we believed and took for granted less and less real. The Earth is not flat, but is actually a sphere. And therefore, parallel lines at our feet are not actually parallel, but will meet at the north and south poles of the Earth. Now, isn't that strange? But there are stranger things to come. The geocentric model, predominant since the time of the ancient Greeks, was replaced in 1543 by the heliocentric model proposed by Nicholas Copernicus. We supposed that the sun revolved around the earth, when actually it was the earth that was revolving around the sun. When the fruits of science became more and more difficult to comprehend, in 1687, Isaac Newton further proposed that it was gravity that drew the earth to revolve around the sun. But in 1919, the general theory of relativity proposed by Albert Einstein in 1915 was validated, demonstrating that in the physical world, mass energy can affect time and space. As mass energy increases, the passage of time slows, and space becomes more visibly warped. Now isn't this profound and perplexing? With the development of science, Although we feel the distorted jade divine beasts of the Han Dynasty can never exist in reality, physicists today are actually saying that these unnatural distortions may better reflect the real shapes of divine beasts when they enter warped space-time. We can come to this conclusion. When science gets closer to the truth, it moves farther away from our perceptions. So is the world that we perceive the real world? The scientist Albert Einstein believed that reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Now when we look at the efforts to standardize and formulize visual illusions by Professor Kokichi Sugihara and view his intricately designed works, we can gain a deeper understanding of this. Although it may be difficult to discern which is real and which is illusion, if we take a moment to think about it, illusory art can only exist in the world that you and I perceive, because these illusions can only be conveyed to viewers through their own visual senses. Let us return to the brain and the visual senses and take a look at how the master craftsmen of the Han Dynasty overcame the challenge of generating ambiguous stimuli by adjusting the unnatural shapes caused by their distortion of beast designs. According to the principle of visual continuity, appendages will not affect our perception of the main body. So even if a curving sine wave is bisected by a line or rectangular plane, we can still automatically integrate the two sides to perceive a complete wave shape. As an example, take a look at these two divine beasts. The central section of one is bisected by a feathery mane, while the other is bisected by a light band of cloud. However, due to visual continuity, the sinuous forms of both divine beasts are fully preserved. With the mastery of such an amazing and applaudable technique, the master craftsmen of the Han Dynasty were able to fully exercise their creativity and complete their individual masterpieces. We can see that the divine beast on this open-work jade B-disc 
is bisected by the clouds generated from the surrounding mists. While the designer of this jade cup has obscured the central section of the divine beast in a cloud-like decoration within the artifact itself. This agate scabbard slide made clever use of the red and white patches present in the original material by carving the red sections in the left and right into body forms twisted in different directions, and then fashioning the remaining white sections into obscuring layers of cloud. The designer of the jade bee disc of Chang Le used the circular outer rim of the disc to bisect the distorted body of the divine beast at top left. This intricate technique of visual obstruction has persisted and can frequently be seen throughout the history of art. That which is ancient is not outdated and in the light of today may even appear new and trendy. Looking back on the jade illusory art of 2000 years ago, this sentiment is revelatory. The divide in space and time cannot thwart the common visual characteristics and aesthetic rapport across the ages. The progress of the physical sciences over the past thousand years has also caused us to reconsider what is real and what is illusion. Although science and our sensory perception may appear to be always at odds, the purpose of scientific achievement is not to induce confusion and bewilderment, but to help us understand the inherent opportunity in our visual limits and peculiarities, and thereby lead us closer toward the truth of this universe. In 2019, precisely 100 years after the general theory of relativity was validated, through this exhibition and feature film, we pay our respects to the nameless Jade Master Craftsman of the Warring States period to the Han Dynasty and the great scientists throughout history who have diligently engaged in the pursuit of truth. To them, we proffer our highest regards and deepest respect.